Hey guys, welcome to Virtual Youth Group for April, was it the 15th? April 15th? Tax yeah. day. Ta don't tax, well not really. It used to be tax day. Well, it should have yes. been tax day, it's not tax day anymore. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, but all right, well, anyway, welcome to uh, Virtual Youth Group. Like I said, we've got Tim joining us again today. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Um, and of course, my beautiful bride, Leah, is here. Um, why'd you laugh? <laughs> She's just glad you didn't confuse us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like Joe Biden. Yeah. Never mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, so hey, guys. Uh, tonight we're going to play a game, and then we are going to have a lesson about probably my favorite disciple, uh, Thomas, which I know might be a little weird for some folks. They're like, wait a second, he doubts. And I'm like, yeah, he does, but that's okay. Uh, but so tonight's game is Match Game, which uh, if you're old, you might remember a TV show called Match Game. It's going to be very similar to that. Uh, but if you're young, you might have no idea what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to say either a word or a phrase, and these two individuals are going to fill in the blank on their whiteboard. All right? And they're going to hide it. So, the, so Tim's going to write a word, he's going to hold it like this, and then you all are going to put in the comments what you think they are going to say. If you match them when they reveal it, then you get 25 points. All right? So 25 points if you get a correct answer. Now, if Tim and Leah both match, now they've not seen these, so uh, they've not had a chance to talk over their answers, but should they match together and you match them, then you'll get 75 points, which is a huge bonus. It's like three times as many points. So 25 for a single match, 75 if you match uh, both of them at the same time. Um, Tim, questions? I think I got it. Leah, questions? I got it. All right. So, <clears throat> the first couple are going to be just words, right? So, you're going to fill in the blank. So, blank, boat. Blank, boat. All right? So, what comes before boat? To give you guys a chance right, to write answers. All right, you guys jump in the comments. Let us know. All right. So, so, so Tim's got one. Leah's got one. Oh, they didn't match, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. All right, you've had a chance to write them down in the comments. So, Tim, what'd you get? The Love Boat. Love Boat. <laughs> Old TV show. I've never seen it. I think it's about a cruise Neither ship. Neither have I. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it's about a cruise ship, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yes. All right. There's a boat so, in it, I'm pretty sure, yeah. There's a boat in the Love Boat, or the, the boat is the Love Boat. I don't know. <laughs> Leah, what'd you get? I have row boat. Row boat. Row boat. All right. Gently row, row, row your boat. Gently down the stream. All right, so if you matched one of them, then you get... 25 points. So I don't know if anybody matched them, but 25 points. All right, guys, erase your boards. And you got to really push down on those, I, I guess. Think. Yeah. All right, well, they're erasing. You are going to fill in the blank. Blank ball. What comes before ball? Blank ball. Lots of options here. Lots of things that you could be writing down. Let's see. So blank ball. Let's see what you get, Tim. All right. All right. Again, they didn't match. That's okay, though. All right, so get your answers in the comments. Three, two, one. Leo, what'd you put? Baskets. Of course you did. Baskets, <laughs> ball. My <laughs> favorite, <laughs> favorite youth group game. The greatest sport ever invented. And I don't just say that because I invented it. So, so <laughs> baskets, ball, or? A uh, much more common football. Football. <laughs> All right, I, I'm not familiar with that. What's that? Yeah, that's the one football. where you kick the ball in the that's goal. Soccer, or no, it's right? not that one. That, that's, that's soccer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, European football. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so if you match one of them, then you have another 25 points. All right, we're going to mix it up a little bit this time. So now the word comes first, and you fill in the second part. Snow blank. Snow blank. So what comes after snow? Not fall or mm -hmm. sun. All right, snow Blank. Depression. What? Depression. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. Give them a chance to, to fill them in. All right. Oh. Okay. So get them. Get your answers in. And Tim, your time. Your turn to. Uh, Clearly, it's going to be a snow plow. Snow plow. <laughs> Mr. Plow. Homer Simpson. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So snow plow, Leah. Man. Snow man. Do you want to build a snowman? I don't. I want to build a sand castle. Might be up yes. To yes. I'll go with that. It's supposed to be cold. That cold? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's with to snow, snow tomorrow. Oh, that's stupid. Yes, it is stupid. May or may not stick. Verdict's still out. I'm sad now. <laughs> yeah, I told All you. right, sorry. Depression. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you matched a 
plow or man, give yourself the 25 points. Now, of course, today Leah will be doing her best to, to calculate points during the uh, the lesson <laughs> part. She'll go back and look at the comments. Actually, no, because we're we're not live. We're uh, yeah. we're in the past. So Phil will just do it correctly the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so so future Phil will calculate your points. Try to keep things in order so you know who wins and who wins the big prize. What are they playing for today, Leah? A snowman. Know. What, a is it? what do they want? What do you want? What tell do you us want? in the comments what you want. Tell us in the comments what you want. We'll tell you what we can yeah, accommodate. Uh, I feel the need to say no guarantee you'll get that. But go <laughs> right. ahead. And the oh yeah, I mean, yeah, right. not, I'm not God, so yeah. you know the. So right. you know, you're not automatically going to get what you ask for. Yeah, I'm saying you're not getting what you ask for. That's on behalf of the finance committee here at the church. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, so so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to guess it's going to be a goodie bag, basket, receptacle, something that uh, you know c contains. Good things. So, all right, here we go. Next up, water blank. Water blank. Fill in water blank. All right, Leah, I'm going to gear up this time. Slide. Water slide and water skis. Skis. These two cannot match. Water slide <laughs> and water skis. All right, if you if you match slide or skis, you get your 25 points. All right, moving full charge ahead. We're going to go to blank nut. Blank nut. All right, Lee answer quick. Oh, all right, let's see. Oh, guys, you've got a match. <coughs> you got a match. All right, all at once. One, two, three. Peanut. Peanut. If you put peanut, you get 75 points. Oh, okay, at least you yeah. scroll it right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> peanut, 75 points. Did you know that uh, in certain parts of Africa, they call them ground nuts because they grow on the ground? Not Because they're actually not nuts at all. They're legumes. It's true. They're peas. Yeah. Legumes. Hence the name. All right. Blank man. Blank man. Get your answers in the comments nice and quick. Blank man. Oh. oh I think I think, I think Tim's answer is, is pretty <laughs> yeah, likely. Right, we need to show it. Alright, Tim, what'd you write? Uh Batman. Batman and Woe Man. Oh, Woman. What? Whoa man. Whoa man. Hey, I suppose you get extra points if they actually got that one. Alright. <laughs> Reminds me of that old movie, <laughs> So I Married an Axe Murderer. Yeah. I don't know Woman, whoa, man. Oh. You act a cuckoo. Thought I would kill you. Sweet bird. I don't know all right, sorry. Right. Right. All right, so 25 points for Batman and Woe Man. Woman. <laughs> all right, I got two more of these, and we're going to change it up a little bit. Here we go. Dog blank. Dog blank. I'm 12. I don't even know what that means. You don't know what this one? You want me to change it? <clears throat> no, 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 no. It's your answer. All right, okay. It's your answer. All right, Leah, but the more common dog poop. Poop. Dog poop. The and dog, dog star. Dog you guys star. know what the dog, dog star, star is? It's one of the stars in the sky. You know, is, that, dog star. is that a Netflix movie? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, no, it's an actual thing. Tim, the stars in the sky. Are there stars elsewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Where else might I find stars? Yeah, Hollywood. There you go. Not currently. Yeah. Not no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All in the Hamptons. And here we go. Easter. Blank. Easter. Blank. <clears throat> Easter. Blank. Easter. All right. Lee's got the more pastoral answer. That's all right. All right, Tim, I think you're first this time. Easter. Eggs. Eggs. I was trying to recover Easter after poop. Eggs. <laughs> and Easter Sunday. Uh, Easter <laughs> Sunday. We got this backwards, but I thought we did. Yeah. If I owned a restaurant, I would create something called the Easter Sunday. They had ice cream and like pastel colored candies and like all kinds of fun things. I, I, I'm, comple I'm completely in. Easter Sunday? Yeah, the Easter Sunday. I don't know. If you could somehow tie it to, to Jesus, you, though, you'd be better. The peanuts know. could be like the stone rolled from the tomb. Ooh, I'm, I'm not that clever with my idea. <laughs> Just give me the ice cream. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are going to move into uh, more more phrases apart from just words. I'm going to change the rules a little bit. Let's make the points this time 50 and 100, all right? So if you match one, you get 50. If they match each other and you match both of them, you'll get 100. So 50 and 100. Here we go. All right, so to make church more entertaining... 
The pastor is going to start blank during the sermon. Oh, you got to joke. <laughs> <laughs> to make church more entertaining, the pastor is going to start blank during the sermon. To make church more entertaining, the pastor is going to start blank during the sermon. It's kind of like Mad Libs. Oh my goodness, they matched. You gotta be joking me. <laughs> they matched. Clearly this is Tim's lifelong dream. Yeah. <laughs> so, my whole life I've been waiting for this moment. Here we go. Reveal them in three, two, one. Dancing. dancing. <laughs> so, to make church more entertaining, Tim's gonna start dancing during the sermon. This, I, this I, I, I'm truly ashamed. <laughs> this is actually a contract. I don't know if yeah, you know that. That's right. right. <clears throat> but you now have to do that. I never thought we would match <laughs> I was going to write yo-yoing because, yeah. you know, you have, there, there are yo-yos on right your desk. Yeah, we are in Tim's office right now. You yeah. yo on his desk. That's a thing he does. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. So right now you're going to write down one of the words to row, row, row your boat, but you cannot use row, your, or boat. You cannot use row, your, or boat. Row, row, row your boat, but not row, your, or boat. There's lots more words to that song. You're gonna write down one of those. Let's see. Oh, and they did not. They did not match this time. Leon, what'd you get? Stream. Stream. Gently down the stream. Exactly. Still. Gently. Gently. So close. Gently. Stream. Not a match. All right. So 50 points if you got gently, or 50 points if you got stream. And so, all right. Here we go. We got a couple more here. All right. Luke Skywalker missed his training session with Yoda. Because he had to blank his lightsaber. Hmm. Luke Skywalker missed his training session with Yoda because he had to blank his lightsaber. Now, if I was going to play this game, I would have written bedazzle. Because I think it would be fun for Luke to have a bedazzled lightsaber. But I don't think they wrote bedazzle. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Leah, I don't know that yours makes any sense. <laughs> it doesn't. But, okay. It doesn't Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's, she, she's allowed to write anything she wants, right? <laughs> Probably more likely than bedazzle. All right, Tim, what'd you get? Find. Find. That you could just good. like use the force and like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, did you see the Force Awakens? They were trying to find the lightsaber. So. Oh. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> and Leo, she wrote. Sharpen. 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 <laughs> but with what? <laughs> I, I was gonna write charge, but I figured. I, I actually, I was gonna write charge it. too. <laughs> yeah. Seems like a. I thing wonder if there's like a universal course. adapter to charge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. As soon as this quarantine is over, I'm going to blank. Um, as soon as this quarantine is over, I'm going to blank. Anyone who has been on Facebook should know this. I've written this several times. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that word. I always mess it up. Hey, you. That's what I thought. Crack has my back on that. You know what? They uh, they didn't match, but I'm gonna call it a match. That's that, that's where we're at. So all right, Tim, what'd you get? Out to eat. Out to eat. Lee, what'd you get? The Mexican restaurant. Mexican oh, restaurant. Okay, okay. X Parade yeah. beast. And I know that Tim eats at X Parade because yes, I we, I just there with him. We yes, crashed. I didn't know we, crashed yeah. we crashed. Yeah. His, uh, yeah. his dinner once. Yeah. So all right. So if you matched going out to eat. The Mexican restaurant or any restaurant name in general, anything that indicated you're going to eat in a location outside your house, give yourself 100 points. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's really, I mean, there, there's a lot of options to this one. I think there's only two that I can think of, and I'm interested to see what Tim comes up with. <laughs> All right. No challenge? Samson was so strong that the blank tried to recruit him. Samson was so strong that the blank tried to recruit him. All right. <laughs> I didn't know which way you'd go. Yeah, yeah I debated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, I'm going to let Leah go first. <laughs> Leah, who tried to recruit Samson? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord tried to recruit <laughs> Samson. Tried? The Lord did recruit Samson. In fact, I think yeah. Samson was so strong. Just because, yeah, because he succeeded of the Lord. doesn't mean he didn't try. <laughs> okay. That might be a technicality. <laughs> All right. I think you're far more likely to uh, match with Tim. Tim. The Avengers. The Avengers tried to recruit him. All right. What do you think happens when Thor and Samson go at it? Um, 
probably a lot of property destruction. <laughs> I think that I can certainly say that despite Samson's positive moments, he probably couldn't live in the Mjolnir. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I got it. Not. Yeah, there was that whole Delilah thing that probably ruined that for him. Hey there, Delilah. Oh, oh yeah. no, sorry, different Delilah. <laughs> All right, so we've got two left. So we've got two left, and uh, these two are my favorite. So uh, Tim, Tim just read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. If Pastor Tim got pulled over, he probably got a ticket for blank while driving. If Pastor Tim got pulled over, he probably got a ticket match with mine. for blank while driving. I think evangelizing while driving is not illegal, so you can't get a ticket for that. So, what would Tim get a ticket for? Blank while driving. Oh, all right. <laughs> Tim, what'd you get? Being awesome. Being awesome while driving. I feel like that would be like an abuse of authority of the police. <laughs> yes. You know, like, oh, you're so awesome. Yeah, you're We're going to find you. <laughs> what made you so awesome? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not his car. All right. <laughs> yeah, definitely the car. All right, Leah. Speeding. Tim, Tim speeding. got pulled over for speeding while driving. <laughs> she now just that, said making a left-hand turn on a one-way street out of the church parking lot. Yeah, he, he has been known to do Any that. Any officers watching this, that's yes. not a, an indication. That was a joke. Yes. Yeah. Just a joke. All right. Yes. Here we go. And, the, and, and last but not least, I don't know where the points are at. I don't know who's winning. I hope some of you made some matches. Here we go. <clears throat> when Leah got pulled over, the officer didn't give her a ticket because she blank. When Leah got pulled over, the officer didn't give her a ticket because she blank. Does that have to be one word? Hmm? Does that have to be one word? No. Yeah, mine was two. Alright. <clears throat> you get to do this however you want to. <laughs> oh. That seems like a long answer. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, Leah, you can go first this time. I said because I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Leah says she didn't do anything wrong. I wish you'd get a match on that one, I think. <clears throat> I Tim was singing. Was singing. <laughs> I, I don't know, but there's a lot of things that aren't wrong that aren't it's, also singing. True. It's the dancing that gets me in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought singing as well. That, that's, yeah. that's the answer that I yeah. thought about going with. All right, so Usually there we go. It's just because I have a headlight out, though, so they don't give me a ticket. Because I've heard from Instagram that Leah sings a lot, so. It's true. She does. Leah yeah. sings more often than most of us are comfortable with. That's not true. That was. That, that was... I mean, at home, probably. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all of them, unless one of you have one that you can come up with on the spot right now. Three, two, one. I'm not good under pressure. Under pressure! <laughs> all right. So they're not good under pressure. They don't have answers. All right, so who wins, who wins, who wins? Let's see. So in the past, our games, which we had the, uh, the McAllister family won games two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they uh, stepped down from victory after their second week, and they gave their prize to the Johns family. Yep. Last week, uh, Molly Sandberg, she was the winner. Yeah. Let's see. So who wins this week? Uh, I will comment here shortly to let you guys know who the winner is. But you've been able to keep track of your own points. You know where you're at. Hopefully some of you got some points. Um, so, all right, well guys, um, I think it's time to transition into the lesson. So I don't really need you here anymore. I love you, but get out of here. All right, so now that they're gone. Um, so I said earlier that we are gonna talk about my favorite disciple. Now a lot of people, their favorite disciple is someone like Peter. Peter is the spokesman of the disciples. He He's often uh, quoted. He says a lot of important stuff. He puts his foot in his mouth a lot of times, and that's okay. But he does all of the, these, these things. Some people like John, right? Um, John, well, not as fast as Peter. We know that. No, 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 faster than Peter. I'm sorry. He's faster than Peter because uh, we know that because in John's gospel, he writes that they run to the tomb, and he gets there first, right? But he again, he, he does some, some very cool stuff. He writes, he writes a couple of letters to... Uh, to, 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 the, to uh, the Christians, and uh, Peter did too. There's all these kind of these the disciples. That those two get a lot of press, but I really, really, really like Thomas. I mean, he, we don't know a lot about him, right? Thomas gets mentioned by name eight times in the Bible. Uh, all four Gospels mention Thomas as one of Jesus' disciples. And uh, let's see, six, no, no, five of the times he's mentioned are just 
lists of uh, people who were present for something. There are other lists of disciples, or and this, this group of people were in a room. And so it's those other three times that I think really, really make Thomas interesting. Um, now, Thomas primarily gets known for, <clears throat> for being Doubting Thomas, right? That, that's the nickname that he gets. He's Doubting Thomas. But let, let's see what else Thomas uh, does. But here are some other kind of things that we know about Thomas first. So Thomas isn't even really his name. Uh, Thomas is also called Didymus, and both Thomas and Didymus mean twin. Um, so Thomas is a nickname. Um, we don't know what his real name is, and uh, some of the early writings call him Judas Thomas, um, which uh, if his name is Judas, then it totally makes sense that he has a nickname, because you've got Judas Iscariot, and then there's another disciple who's just called Judas, not Iscariot. Um, and so, um, if three of Jesus' disciples have the same first name, then of course nicknames are going to happen. I think that happens whenever you got groups of people that have the same name. <clears throat> and so, because that could get really confusing. Um, and so, it, it, we don't even know why he's called twin. Most likely, it's because he's got a twin brother or a twin sister. Um, but there's also some... Uh, some some people that speculate that Thomas actually looked an awful lot like Jesus, and so that it was a joke, like, oh, you look like Jesus, and so they just called him a twin. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, we, know, we know that he, uh, he's called twin. Uh, and then tradition tells us that after uh, the Gospels uh, were written, after Jesus dies and uh, resurrects, ascends into heaven, that Thomas goes to India, and he... Uh, evangelizes there, that he, uh, he establishes seven churches, and then in, uh, in the year 72, so about 40 years after Jesus dies, um, he gets martyred, so he gets put to death for his faith there. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's what we know about Thomas. Uh, we don't have a full biography. We, he was probably from Galilee, like most of the disciples, um, and we, we don't have the story of when he was called or how he was called like we do with Peter or Andrew or the sons of Zebedee, right? We can see when Jesus calls them, you know, it's just, uh, you know, put down your nets and follow me, and then they do. And <clears throat> we, don't, we don't get that with Thomas. Uh, but there are three times in Scripture where Thomas speaks. Uh, four, maybe, kind of, if the second one is, uh, or excuse me, the third one's cut into uh, two pieces. But here we go. So what are the things that Thomas says? Um, so once in John 11, Thomas says, let's go and die with Jesus. Let's go and die with Jesus. So let's set the scene. Uh, Jesus was just told that his friend Lazarus was very, very sick. And Jesus says, ah, he's not going to die. And he waits two days before he decides to go um, and, and see his sick friend. Uh, when Jesus finally says, let's go back to Judea, the disciples protest. They're a little nervous, and they say, whoa, Jesus, we're going back? Just a couple of days ago, do you not remember that people tried to stone you? And we're going to go there again? <clears throat> and then Thomas displays great faith and maybe a little bit of pessimism. Maybe that's why I like him so much. I don't know. And he says, let's go too and die with Jesus. So you've got 11 disciples saying, I'm not so sure about this, Jesus. Let's, let's, let's back up. And Thomas is faithful, right? The other disciples, by this point, they know that Lazarus has died. And they know that people were trying to stone Jesus just a few days before. And they don't want to join Lazarus in the grave, right? But Thomas, in the midst of this great fear, he has this faith and he says, let's go and die with Jesus. <clears throat> Later on, in John 14, uh, Thomas says, We have no idea where, you're go where you are going, so how can we know the way? Right? We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? So again, let's set the scene. It's the Last Supper, right? We talked about this last week. Jesus is now, he's washed the disciples' feet. He's predicted that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. Uh, he's told Simon Peter that he's going to deny him three times. He's held the, the Lord's Supper, the, the first communion ceremony. And then he starts to teach the disciples, right? He starts to tell them things. 
And, and here's what he says. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, would I not have told you that I'm, or would I have told you that I'm going to, a, to, to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me wherever I am. And you know the way to where I am going. To which Thomas responds, we have no idea where you're going. How can we know the way? And my favorite thing is that this gets glossed over a little bit, but Jesus responds with one of his most famous statements. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do not know him, or you do know him, and you have seen him. Right? Thomas does not understand what Jesus is saying. He doesn't recognize that when Jesus says, my Father's house, he's talking about heaven. Right? So, he, he says, he doesn't just sit there, he doesn't sit there and nod and smile and pretend like he understands, like some of us do, right? But he says, I don't understand. I have no idea where this place you are going is, so I don't know how I could possibly know how to get there. So then he channels his inner Michael Scott and he says, why don't you explain it to me like I'm five? Right? Now Jesus doesn't actually. Jesus just gives him another kind of confusing statement, right? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life, right? But, <clears throat> but Thomas says, I don't understand. And then finally, and most famously, Thomas' statement is, I won't believe it until I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side, right? So let's set the scene. Jesus was crucified. Thomas knows Jesus is dead. Then some women start saying that Jesus is resurrected. Now, not just like, oh, then some women, right? But some, some of Jesus' female followers who show up at the tomb, right? It's Mary and, uh, and uh, jo Joanna and uh, Mary Magdalene, I think, right? And, uh, and so, so they're, they're reliable sources, but they are saying something Thomas struggles with, right? So then... Um, Jesus shows up at a gathering of the disciples. Now, Thomas isn't with them, right? So he shows up and he, he talks to the disciples. Um, and he says, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so he shows up and he talks to the disciples. And then the disciples say, Thomas, guess what? Jesus is alive. And Thomas says, yeah, no, he's not. That doesn't make any sense to me. Jesus is dead. I know that he's dead. And he says, if I don't put my finger in the wound in his hand and touch the wound in his side, then I will not believe it. And for eight days, Thomas is in this state of unbelief, right? So eight days later, uh, Thomas is with the disciples and they're gathered together and Jesus shows up again and he says, peace be with you. And then he says, Thomas, come, put your finger here and look at my hands, put your hand into my wound and my side. Don't be faithless any longer, but believe. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Right? So this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. I hate that we gloss over the fact that Thomas asks to see and touch Jesus' wounds because the other disciples, they had that same opportunity when Jesus appeared the first time. He says, when while Jesus was talking, he showed them the wounds in his hand and on his side. So Thomas isn't showing some great display of, of arrogance or, or anything. He, he's just saying, he says, I want the same opportunity that you had. Right? I hate that Thomas gets a bad rap and he gets called Doubting Thomas. I wish he was known as Honest Thomas. I wish he was known as Brave Thomas, because I think those qualities here are so much more important than his doubt. <clears throat> right? I love that Thomas is willing to say to his friends, guys, I don't believe it. He spent three years with these people. These are his closest friends. These are people that he has 
been through a lot with. And they tell him something that he doesn't understand. They tell him something that just doesn't fit for him. And he says, what you're saying to me doesn't make any sense. I need more evidence. Right? But I also love that Thomas is willing to change his mind. When he gets the evidence he asked for, when Jesus shows up, Thomas is overtaken by the experience. And he declares, my Lord and my God. He isn't so stubborn that he refuses to change his mind. He isn't so stubborn that he refuses to believe. He isn't that stubborn, right? He, he's willing to change. All right. So what do I love about Thomas? I love that Thomas is bold and that he says what's on his mind. I love that Thomas, that even to his friends, even to Jesus, he's willing to be honest, right? Thomas makes four statements uh, in, this, in the Bible, and, and, and there are four statements that each one of us is allowed to say. I would say there are four statements that each one of us is encouraged to say, right? Thomas said, let's go. When he was strong, full of faith, he says, let's go. Let's be men of action. When Thomas didn't understand, he said, I don't understand. When he was confused, when he needed an explanation, he said, I don't understand. When Thomas heard something that didn't make sense to him, he said, I don't believe. When he had doubts, he named them. He said, I don't believe the thing you're saying to me. And finally, Thomas looked at Jesus and he said, my Lord and my God. When the Lord took hold of his heart, Thomas declared, my Lord and my God. I believe this is the first time in scripture that someone in the narrative looks at Jesus and calls him God. He's been called the Messiah. He's been called a teacher. He's been called a lot of things. But Thomas says, you are my Lord and my God. Each one of us at different points in our lives can make those statements, right? Let's go. I don't understand. I don't believe my Lord and my God. Thomas is called twin. He's a multifaceted individual. He is so much more than just a doubter. He fluctuates between times of great faith, and unbelief. We don't know who Thomas's twin is, but I think that I would like to believe that Thomas is my twin, right? I am Thomas's twin. I fluctuate between times of faith, bold faith, being a man of action, and times where I say I don't understand, and even times where I say I don't know about all this, right? Sometimes my faith is strong and sometimes it is less strong. Sometimes it is weak. Sometimes I need other people to hold me up. I need other people to guide me and to lead me. And I need to be someone who is willing to say that. Like I told you last week, God can handle your doubts. He certainly handled Thomas's doubts, right? Be bold in your faith. Be honest to speak up when you don't understand. Be brave to say that you need more evidence. Don't smile and nod. Don't just say, well, you know, the expectation is that I believe all this and I believe this, this, and this, so that's what I believe. But come to understand what you believe and why you believe it and express when you're confused or unsure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Thomas. Thank you for his example. Thank you that he shows us that men of faith, the people of faith, that they sometimes have doubts, that they sometimes have questions, that they sometimes need evidence. Thank you that when Thomas doubted, you didn't reject him, but instead you said, come and see for yourself. 
Lord, embolden my faith. Lord, help me to be a man of action. Lord, help the people listening today to be men and women of action, to be people who say, let's go, to be people that look to you and say, my Lord and my God. Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we just thank you for all of the good. Lord, help us to find the good, even in the midst of quarantine, even in the midst of confusion, even in the midst of loneliness, or all of the other things that we might be feeling. Lord, we love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. <coughs> all right, guys. So tonight we talked about Thomas. Next week, I don't know who we're going to talk about. I want you to tell me, either in the comments right now, or shoot me a message, anybody from Scripture, anybody that you can, that you have questions about, anybody that is interesting to you, anybody, let me know, and I will put together a little uh, a portrait of that person and figure out who they are, what they did, and what we can learn from them. Sometimes that example might be positive, sometimes their example might be negative, right? If we were talking about Samson, we mentioned him earlier, I could talk about a lot of foolish things Samson did. And so the lesson might be, don't be blank, right? For Thomas, I get to look at Thomas and say, Thomas, he inspires me, he teaches me, he helps me to be a better person. So guys, until next week, uh, be good. We love you. Jesus loves you. And uh, let us know what we can do to support you.